I'd like to thank Mark Mitchell. I heard that song and I loved it. I said, you know, this fits our cowboy church. But it didn't have a video. So Mark Mitchell put all that video together, tied that in there. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate you. You bet. Close to the land. You know, this song alone, and that's what got me. Guys, a lot. Oh, you forgot them? No, we're good. This song describes our, many of our church members and the concept of our cowboy church, what it's about. They are small-town country folks, ranchers and farmers, outdoor folks, people that love the land, this country, and the God that created it. Amen. Amen. You know, you're at the Kid JBRC Cowboy Church in Palmer when this happens. People wonder about when Jesus fed the 5,000, if the fish were bass or catfish. The ranchers and the farmers didn't like the idea of Noah letting the coyotes on the ark. I asked Bubba to help with something during service, and five guys stood up. A member of the church, of the church requested to be buried in his four-wheel drive truck because it ain't never been in a hole we can't get out of. There's a special fundraiser for a new septic tank. <laughs> And four generations of the same family sit together in worship service. You never know what exciting thing is going to happen at this church next. I have seen the whole gamut of it. I have seen stuff that would just blow a person away. We had a sheep in church one time over here with a diaper on. You know, I, we've, we've seen the gamut of it. And I added this one to our list. You know you're at the J. C. Cowboy Church when church members are taking a truck grill apart to get a live chicken out from behind the grill. <laughs> last Sunday. Last Sunday. I have a video. Will you play that for us? Like that's crazy, you're having so much trouble breaking that. And she, and she just steps right through it. Yeah. All right, little chicken. You don't think that'll be enough? I'm going to try to work. I'm going to try to work. So I'm telling you, uh, provided this video. Oh. Oh! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh! Look at her! Oh, <laughs> Thank you, Paula Weatherly, for taking that chicken home. They had it by its neck, and I said, go ahead and ring it. We'll just cook it when it gets out. She goes, no. The story is Mitch. Everybody knows Mitch with our singles group and one of our lay pastors here. Uh, the story he told me that he left his house uh, one day and a chicken flew up in front of him and he never paid it any attention. And I think that day when he got back home, he saw the chicken walking around behind his grill, between his grill and the, the uh, radiator there. And he thought about getting it out and then he thought he'd wait or something and he forgot. And he drove to church and somebody told him there was a chicken walking around behind his grill. And then a bunch of these guys, my brother and Lenny and a bunch of them decided they were going to get it out of there. The grill was already broke. So they worked a good while out there getting that chicken out, making sure they didn't kill it, getting it out. I don't know how it got in there without getting injured or hurt, but, uh, you know, God was looking after that chicken. Amen. <laughs> As I said, you never know what's going to happen here at the Cowboy Church. That's what, I love our church because the people are unique. They really don't try to complicate things, and they tend to look at things a little differently than most people do. That's what makes us all so connected and so you enjoy it. It's, it's like I say, I get to come over here every Sunday to a family reunion, and I get to visit with everybody, and I get to hear the stories and the things, and, 
And this is probably minor compared to some of the stories I've heard. But, you know, it's great. It's great that we're all unique and we have these different things and we're simple. You know, uh, uh, that could be a complicated thing for some people in the city. What I do about the chicken? Well, they done took it to a body shop getting that chicken out. Well, there's always a way when you deal with people like that here. I always say this church reminds me of Andy Griffin's Mayberry a lot. <laughs> We have Andy and Barney's and Aunt B's and Thelma Lou's. And, of course, we have Goobers and Gomers. <laughs> I'll let you figure out who you represent. <laughs> think about the life lessons and the mishaps on the Andy Griffin Show. Think about that. And think about our church and compare the two. I mean, such as a loaded goat full of dynamite. That could happen here. I don't know what he'd be loaded with, but he'd be loaded it could happen here. Those things happen, and they happen in Mayberry. And when I see those things, I think, man, that is our church. That is our church family. They are so unique. They are so different, and they're so exciting and so funny. And I love that. I love that about the church, and I love how we have so many patriots in the church that love this country, and they love this land. One year we had somebody, um, I won't mention who it was, they threw some used fireworks in our dumpster one night, and that's why it doesn't have any uh, doors on it anymore. The dumpster caught on fire, and it was the biggest light show we had that night. It burned them all up. Ron Townley went out and finally repainted the dumpster. It was looked pretty rough. Where does that happen? Cowboy Church, right? Yeah. We are a church that follows God, but definitely marks to the beat of a different drum. I assure you that. We're a bunch of mixed nuts. And you know what? I'm glad to be one of those nuts right along with you. That's what makes the church so exciting and why I love it so much. And you'd realize just as I did on Friday morning when we came out here to work in the arena, just how much of a country church we're in when you see many wild deer feeding in this pasture right out here behind the church. You always ask me, how big? Was there a buck out there with big horns? You know what I did? I took the time just to sit and watch them for a little while. To me, this is living close to the land. You understand what God created and why he created it. God created the land and he wants us. Some of you may disagree, but he wants us to step outside and enjoy it. He truly does. I said I wasn't going to say this, but I am. The coronavirus drove a lot of people outdoors that never hardly spent time outdoors in their life. Because of the fresh air and the sunshine is one of the best healers you can get a hold of. You may wonder, how would I know that for certain? How would I know God wants us to step outside and enjoy his creation and enjoy the outdoors? Have you ever considered that probably 99% of the Bible takes place outdoors? Hardly any of the Old and New Testament takes place in an indoor setting. It's all outside. Remember, this is just a building. That's all it is. The people are the church. So the building's important, but it's just a building. The life we read about in the Bible that provides great stories for us of our faith is found in the outdoor life. And you may not realize that until you start to read and you start to put it in that perspective. Some of the greatest events of the Bible's scriptures are all outdoor events. The Garden of Eden. The burning bush. The giving of the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. The 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. The crossing of the Red Sea and, of course, the Jordan River all played part in these scriptures, and it was all outdoors. If we just look at the life of Jesus himself in the New Testament, most of the great moments and messages he brought forth for our faith take place in the great outdoors. The wise men from the east following a star. The Savior born in an open-air stable. The calling of the disciples took place along a lake shore. The feeding of 5,000 and the Sermon on the Mount 
We're all outdoors. And most of all the stories in the Bible, from the New to the Old Testament, are outdoor stories. The question is, comparing to Cowboy Church and many churches, how many of us would be drawn to the Christian faith if all the stories occurred inside a church or temple? You sitting here today can probably attest to that more than anybody else. There are things about a country church, which I consider us a country church also, small town country church. There's something about that part of our culture in this area that draws people to this church. And it draws people to cowboy churches because of the way of life. Psalm, Psalms chapter 8, beginning at verse 1. Would you join me there this morning? Psalms chapter 8, beginning at verse 1. It says, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Though the praise of the children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. While I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, and the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that care for them, you have made them a little lower than the, made them a little lower than the angels, and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds, and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky, and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. God created it all. Amen. Amen. It's no accident. And, and in this, basically in this psalm connects God's majesty and his greatness to the things that one can see on a daily basis in the great outdoors. He's talking about all that and how he created it. And it's no accident that Jesus' most profound teachings not only took place in the great outdoors close to the land... But he also used some part of the natural world as an object lesson. Always. Jesus said, consider the mustard seed. The lilies of the field are the birds in the air. He gives a parable of a farmer out sowing seeds. He tells a fisherman to cast his net on the other side of the boat. Jesus walks on water and he calms the storms. Jesus was outdoors. Jesus was constantly using the outdoors to teach us about life and morals in every way. Mother Nature is a living laboratory where the majesty of God is most powerfully present at all times. From the tiniest insect to the highest mountain, you can see God's hand in it. We always say, if you've never visited the Grand Canyon, you've probably seen pictures of it. You've, you've probably uh, had people tell you about it, try to describe it. But until you stand on the edge of the Grand Canyon, you can't understand the majesty of God in that place. Because the time we did, we could not stop looking at it. When we walked away from it, we were still turning around looking at it. God's hand was in the middle of that as he is in the mountains, the seas, and everywhere else. It's God's majesty that is in the outdoors if we just take the time to look. I'm not the only one that believes that the more we lose touch with the natural world outside, the more we lose touch with God who created it. And I think we do. I think nowadays with the, all the new technology out there with video games, TVs, internet, everything that goes on, I think more and more people have slid away from the outdoors and nature. They don't spend enough time out there. Our kids, we don't encourage that as much. As you see in these videos, these farmers and ranchers teaching their kids values and morals. I always love the FFA. I love it because the agriculture industry actually teaches kids through showing animals. They teach them responsibility, and they teach them about life and life lessons. You know, there's nothing harder than 
taking an animal and raising it from very young and getting it up to show stock and showing it and then watch it get on a trailer to go get slaughtered or sold to somebody else. That's tough. But it builds character in our children. And it builds character and they kind of see the moral of the whole thing. And I think we're missing that today in the society because more things are being done sitting in front of the TV or a computer than it is outdoors. Most Christians that are here today, you know the story of Job and how he endured seamlessly endless suffering and loss in his life while he was wrestling with God every step of the way. But if you know that story of Job, maybe there's something you didn't know about Job. What some Christians might not know about Job is how deeply connected and tuned into the natural world he was. Let's look at the book of Job chapter 12, beginning at verse 7. Just flip forward from Psalms just a little bit and you'll find it right there. Job chapter 12, beginning at verse 7. It says, but ask the animals and they will teach you. Are the birds in the sky and they will tell you. Or speak to the earth and it will teach you. Or let the fish in the sea inform you. Which of all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of, of, of all mankind. Right here reading this, now don't get me wrong. Job's not trying to be Dr. Doolittle here and tell us by advising us to talk to the animals because sometimes you can get locked up for that nowadays or put away. But we do talk to our animals. Most of you, have, I'm sure, have dogs or some kind of animal. And you talk to them. And some of them talk back to you, I'm sure, in their own way. But that's what he's saying. Pay attention to what God created. I believe he's emphasizing that God's hand and his handiwork are so obvious and noticeable through nature, than any of us would believe if we'd just take the time to be still. Look and listen. Get out and enjoy what he created. And there may be somebody here today that they might not understand the purpose of this message. Where are you going with this? I was telling Terry, this may not be the most inspirational message, but I'd pray that it'd be uplifting and encouraging to each and every one of you. The purpose is to enlighten everyone on the foundation of God and this church. How this church began with country folks that are close to the land. Farmers, ranchers, small town people, simple people that enjoy life being simple and uncomplicated. That's how this church got started and that's the purpose. Folks that believe God created everything for their benefit and how God uses people in all kinds of situations to bring others to know him. That happens here all the time. We have a lot of loving and servant people here in the church. If they didn't love the small town country life, they wouldn't live here. And they might not even like the concept of this church because it doesn't fit. I always say Cowboy Church or especially this church is, or any one of them you go to. It's like a good pair of gloves or a good pair of boots. If they fit, you'll wear them. If they don't, you don't want any part of it. Amen. And it's great to have this nice building to hold our worship service in. But it's also important that we reach outside of this building and start planting seeds just like Jesus did. Amen. Very important. If we start outdoors, close to the land, where we can meet people right where they are, we might just be able to lead someone to know Jesus Christ. Meet them right where they are. There's many people who won't step foot in a building, but if we have a shooting event, if we have a men's gathering outdoors that we're going to camp out, if we go fishing, if we're shooting, whatever we're doing, if we're cooking outdoors or we're in the arena, it'll draw people. They might not step foot in here, but that's not our job. Our job is to lead them to Christ. He'll direct them where they go next, right? And when they feel part of things, people want to feel part of something. And if we lead them here, maybe they'll step through those doors and take the challenge and, and become members. 
and become friends and become part of this family. It's not about the numbers. It's not about the numbers at all. It's about reaching Christ one at a time. And that's what I believe that we're, we're set forward to do. Very rarely, very, very rarely did Jesus and his disciples try to draw or coax people to come to the temple on Sabbath day. Very rarely did they try to coax anybody to do that. Instead, they spent most of their time in the great outdoors. Going to where the people were. And where God's presence is so abundantly felt and experienced. And that's outdoors. I believe so. I believe our band can rally us up. They play such great music. They do things. They get us excited about church service on Sunday morning. And then all the people that love on one another, visit with one another, that adds to it. But if you remember, some of you that are a little older, the old tent revivals that were held outdoors. Man, God was in the midst of all that. Some of them preachers could go crazy. But they were leading people to Christ. And people loved them outdoors. When we first, when I first started coming over to JBRC, when we were in the little building, we had three roll-up doors. And if it was a beautiful day, our air conditioner didn't work all that good, so we raised them doors and let the sun shine in. It was great. And I think sometimes we have to get there. We have to get outside these walls and start to reach others. This year, our goal for this next year is to provide more outdoor activities. We've been working at it pretty hard. Uh, I know it's a time thing and everything's timed right, but uh, there were a bunch of guys that showed up here on uh, Friday and worked all day till dark on trying to get the arena going again. We've got a little bit more to do out there, but we're trying to get it up so water won't stand in that arena. And I think we're gaining ground. And all the other things, we've got, a, we've got fantastic things from the rodeo arena to our outdoor pavilion. We would like to see our outdoor pavilion having a cooking station out there or an outdoor kitchen cooking station out there so we can do more out there. You know, when we're going to be offering more fishing and shooting events along with campfires, music, and singing, we intend to get outdoors and get close to the land this next year so that we might draw others to this great family we have here and maybe even create an opportunity for us to introduce the unsaved to Jesus Christ through different means and different ways. You know, when we have outdoor events, more people tend to show up. Some people don't think they can walk through those back doors. They think the roof will cave in. <laughs> if that was going to happen, that would have happened with a bunch of us in here. Amen? Amen. It's still standing. Amen. We just need to encourage them to get on the grounds. Get around people. You know, we see that happen through our fishing events. We see that happen through our rodeo events. We see that happen through our outdoor gatherings and all that kind of stuff. That we get closer to people. And if you are who you say you are. There's not a person out there who doesn't want what you have. I assure you. Just be unique. Be who you are and be the real thing. First Timothy chapter 4 says, and I'm going to close with an NLT version here instead of the NIV. It says, since everything God created is good, we should not reject any of it, but receive it with thanks. For we know it was made acceptable by the word of God and prayer. Thank you, Lord. For all you created for us. Yeah. Now may we get out and enjoy it. And use it to further your kingdom. Amen. Let's pray. Father God we come to you this morning. Father we are thankful. We're just thankful for the blessings and favor you pour out on your church house. And this church family. Father we're thankful for this beautiful weather. We're thankful for this building. And just this, this, this land. Father that you've uh, allowed us to use. Father, we do thank you for the Cowboy Church here and the people. Thank you for their hearts and their love for you. And Father, I pray that we learn to appreciate more of what you've created for us. And that we stop taking advantage of it. Understand it's put there for a purpose and for your will and your glory. So Father, I pray today that we step outside these doors. We begin to witness to others and meet them right where they are, wherever that would be. Father, that we might share your, your name and what it is you can do for them as you've done for us, Father, that we reflect you in everything we do. 
Father, we love you and praise you. Father, I pray that everything we did today was uplifting, glorifying, and pleasing to you. And we ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. Once again, I want to...